Now some of these are really tiny and then some of them are about the size of a small marble but they all should grow out just the same. So we're gonna stick them down in there with the pointy end up. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all having a fantastic day. It is Friday, September 1st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we've got some more pretty cool onions here to plant, these Egyptian walking onions. So we're gonna find a spot in the raised bed garden here behind me to plant some of these. We'll talk about how these things grow and our plans for them going forward. But before we plant those onions, it's been a while since I showed you everything that's going on here in the raised beds. We're getting quite the jungle out here right now. So I figured we'd walk around, look at some of the stuff that's growing. We'll start out right here where we have this ageratum growing. I know some people say it's really ageratum, but I just like the way ageratum sounds. One of our favorite flowers to grow every year. I really like this variety compared to varieties I've grown in the past. So this variety here I think is called High Tide. And it gets a little taller than some of the Ageratum varieties we've grown previously. It's a nice little addition to some flower bouquets that we've been making with some of those zinnias back there. And then in two of these other round raised beds we have these very prolific white swan marigolds. So we had some cherry tomatoes in each of these beds, two plants each, but those were toast about a month or so ago. So we've removed those and now we just have the marigolds in these beds. I have hacked these back with the head shears several, several times just to kind of keep them manageable and they just keep growing back. I really, really like this white swan variety. Not as big as those giant marigolds that we've grown before but these are really pretty and they just keep growing and growing and growing and then we don't really have anything in this round raised bed we had some woody celery and parsley in here that i cut a while back just kind of been saving this bed so we can plant a cool season veggie in here in the next month or so and then in our second row of beds here we've got these bunch puerto rico sweet potatoes I've really been wanting to dig some of these, but I know I gotta wait. These have a little longer maturity date than some of the other varieties we grow. The plants are looking great though, kind of spilling over the bed there. Have had a little bit of insect pressure on the leaves. That doesn't worry me a whole lot. I may start scratching around in here in the next week or two just to see what we've got on a couple of these plants, but I really need to wait till mid-September to dig them all. I think we're gonna have a pretty good harvest here. And then in this bed, we've got these sunflowers I showed you on the last video. They took a pretty good beating from Idalia. Some of these zinnias in here took a pretty good beating as well, but they're still kicking. Got some nice white zinnias there, and then some of those queenie zinnias down there. It's just kind of falling all over the place. And then moving along the second row of beds, I think this is where we're going to plant those Egyptian walking onions in a minute. We do still have some zinnias on the end here. They're sprawling all over the place. They've been beaten, battered by the wind this season, but it hasn't killed the plants yet. I think though, for the sake of getting these onions planted, we'll get them out of here today. And then in our third row of beds, we've got more of those bunch Puerto Rico sweet potatoes. If you recall back when we planted these, we buried a bunch of fish in this bed. Did the same thing with that other bed over there where we had the sweet potato plants growing. And these things seem to love it. Yeah, getting a little pest pressure on the leaves here. These plants are spilling over everywhere. I think we're gonna have a really good harvest in here. We've also got some more white zinnias in here in this jungle of a bed and we've still got some collards that are hanging around i haven't pulled them yet i was just going to see if they could make it through the summer and it looks like they just might now they look pretty rough now but for instance on this plant here it's starting to recover a little bit we might could actually eat some collards off that plant there and then in this bed, we've got our Louisiana evergreen shallots that we planted a few weeks ago, or we planted some of these a few weeks ago. So interesting comparison here with the ones we planted a few weeks ago versus the ones we moved from our other raised bed earlier this year. So the ones we planted a few weeks ago, man, they came up fast. And if you look there, you can see they have already started to multiply. So what we'll probably do here in the next month or so is divide these up and cover more surface area of this bed. 
Over here, we have the ones that we split and planted kind of in the early summer. And I don't think that is the best way to do it. Now, these are starting to pop now, but they don't look near as good as these right here. So that kind of reinforces some of the advice that Cajun B gave us as far as these Louisiana evergreen shallots go. I think it's best to wait till the plants form some little bulbs in the soil there and say early to midsummer, pull those up, let them dry out a little bit, and then replant them in August. Because the ones we have here that we just planted in August look a lot better than the ones that we planted and tried to grow through the middle of summer. And then in our next bed, we had some Dixie Red tomatoes down the center here. Pulled those out about a month or so ago. We had planted some basil on both sides of those tomato plants. And as you can see, the basil still looking really, really good. We've got some lemon basil over here. Got some Thai basil here. The bees are loving the flowers on all of these. Got some Genovese basil right here. Some of these don't look as great as the others but still pretty happy with how this is kicking along throughout the summer i just come in here with the head shears give this a little haircut every couple weeks and just keeps growing and growing and then in this back row in this bed we've got some fall taters that we planted a few videos ago i have been a little bit worried about these rotting with all the rain we got from idalia and a couple extra showers a few days afterwards i have scratched around in here a little bit to make sure they're not rotting and we can see on there still looks pretty good so hopefully those will get some above ground vegetation going pretty soon and then in these last two tall beds, we've got a fall round of summer squash going. Here we've got some tempest squash that we need to thin out. Over there in that bed, we've got some of those squash seeds that Brent sent us. Getting a little bit of white fly pressure on these already. Obviously, we need to thin them out, but I probably need to give them a little spray as well. Knock down those white flies. All right, now back to the task at hand today, talking about these onions and getting some of these planted. So I showed you those Louisiana evergreen shallots over there, how well those are doing. We sold out of those pretty dang fast on the website. We should have more next year, come late summer, early fall. Hopefully, if you got some of those, yours are doing as well as ours are. Now these Egyptian walking onions here are something I've never grown, but something I've always wanted to try. And a few weeks ago, we had a viewer send us a few bulbs of these, and then I was able to find a supplier in Iowa that had a bunch of them. So I went ahead and got a whole box because I knew some of you guys would want to try them as well. So you can find these on our website at lazydogfarm.com. Now, these are similar to those Louisiana evergreen shallots in the fact that they do multiply. They just multiply a little differently than those do. So these will multiply at the base of the plant and even produce little bitty shallots, much like those Louisiana evergreen shallots over there. But these also produce bulb clusters on top of the onion plant. And when those bulb clusters get big and heavy in the summer, they fall over and reroot, and that's where they get the name walking onions. So I'll try to put a picture right here to show you what the bulbs on top of the onion plant look like so you can harvest those split them up and replant them kind of like we're going to be doing today or as i mentioned earlier you can just let them fall over and let them spread that way now from what i understand these egyptian walking onions are pretty cold hardy i think they're rated for zones three all the way through 10. now these came from a grower in iowa who said they grow all throughout the winter up there so that should give you an idea of just how cold hardy they are from what I understand, if it gets really, really cold, it can burn back the tops a little bit, but no worries, they'll sprout again in the spring. Obviously down here, they're gonna grow all throughout the winter really, really well, but you can pretty much plant these anywhere and they may grow some for you in the fall. They may die back a little bit in the winter, but they're gonna kick back up in the spring. So we're gonna use this long skinny bed that I showed you earlier and fill it with these Egyptian walking onions. But I think I'm gonna get these zinnias out of here first. These have been good to us, but for the sake of tidying up things a little bit, I'm gonna get these out of here. And as we always try to do, I'm just gonna clip these at the base of the soil. Goodness, I might have to go get some lockers. Man, those stems are thick. Huh, 
been looking for that rascal right there for a few weeks. It was hidden underneath those zinnias there. Good to find that. We're gonna clip all these out of here, clean this up a little bit, and then we'll be ready to do a little bit of soil amendment here before we plant. All right, so we got those zinnias out of there. I already had two drip tubing lines in place here, which is gonna work well. They had gotten a little bit wonky on me, so I pulled up the staples and straightened them up a little bit. To amend this bed, I've got a couple things I wanna add here. So I've got a piece of a bag of black velvet mushroom compost. We're just gonna dump that all over the bed here. Try to smooth that out a little bit, break up some of those chunks. That bag had gotten a little wet during the hurricane, but pretty easy to get it smoothed back out here. And I'm gonna take a couple handfuls of our Coop Grow fertilizer here, put it down as a pre-plant. Those Louisiana evergreen shallots seem to be liking it over there, so I imagine these Egyptian walking onions will like it as well. And then lastly, we'll just take our little scratcher here and kind of incorporate all that into the soil a little bit. Got some pretty healthy soil here. Can see a lot of leftover roots in there, which is always a good thing. And I'm going to kind of make my drip tubing lines visible again so I'll know where to plant. Kind of pull the dirt off the top of those a little bit there. And we're ready to go. So we're gonna plant these on a double row just like we did those Louisiana evergreen shallots. So we'll plant a row on this side of the tubing, a row on this side of the tubing, and then do the same thing over there. Now some of these are really tiny, and then some of them are about the size of a small marble, but they all should grow out just the same. So we're gonna stick them down in there with the pointy end up, put them about, I don't know, four inches apart or so along here. We can stack these in here pretty thick. All right, so we got those two little double rows planted there. Now you can just leave these things in the soil and treat them like the perennial they are. They're pretty maintenance free. But let me show you what I'm gonna do to mine. We'll use those Louisiana evergreen shallots over there as an example. So here's one of those shallot plants that has already started to multiply. So the one bulb we planted has already formed, looks like seven different little plants here. So assuming those do the same thing, which they should, I'm gonna let them grow out like this, multiply out a little bit, and then say maybe mid to late fall or early winter, I'm gonna pull up this clump, I'm gonna separate all these out, I'll put one back in this spot, and then I'll use the others to plant this bed even thicker than it is already planted. So much like those Louisiana evergreen shallots, these Egyptian walking onions are going to be a nice continual source of green onion tops for you. And you can harvest and eat those little bulbs as well. You can split them up and increase your planting area like we're planning on doing. Or you can just leave them there and let them roll. And if you've grown these Egyptian walking onions before, especially if you're in the northern states, please do share in the comments below just how cold tolerant you have found them to be. That way everybody else can read those comments and kind of see what they can expect in their growing zone. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where you can find those walking onions and also our Coop Grow fertilizer. And if you missed that video where we planted and talked about those Louisiana evergreen shallots, you can find that right here. We'll tell you the differences between all the different kinds of onions out there and show you how we planted those that are already looking so great. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.